All right, here's the new sharpening system that was sent to me for review. This is the Halfstone V6 Deluxe, and it's very suitable for sharpening long blades, and particularly swords, because it's got this dual clamp system. And you can see right here, this is as far apart as the two clamps go. So that's, of course, quite a bit more stability. I still have to improvise a little bit because this is a lot of mass hanging off of one end. So if this is unsupported, then the entire thing just tips over. And even if it didn't, the blade would sag quite a bit. So the step ladder here is almost the exact right height. I just had to put this piece of cloth there to compensate for the rest. It's the same concept as the other sharpening system I showed. So you've got the stone holder here. Just push that in, can remove the stone. These are double-sided. And it's attached to the rod that moves back and forth, but is always at the same angle if you keep it on the blade. And um, what I really appreciate about the deluxe version here is that in order to flip this over to work the other side, I don't even have to remove this from the clamps. All I need to do is just flip it over, and there you go. So on the other side, I've got a tripod set up so it rests on there. So now I can quickly and easily just switch between the two sides. So that helps a lot. What's also nice is that it's got this metal platform here. So if you've got an angle cube, you can put it on there and measure the angle precisely. So you would you know, zero it first on the blade. Now, you can also put it on the clamps, but the clamps are not at the exact same angle that the blade is. So you put that on, then you zero it. There it is. And then I put it on here. It'll show me what angle we're at. So this is 23.7. And uh, yeah, so I generally like to be you know, for tatami cutting around you know, 22 and a half or around there. You know, it doesn't have to be 100% exact. So if you wanted to be this precise, then you would you know, just work one section at a time and then you know, switch over to the other and adjust the angle here because in case in a case like this where the blade actually has a distal taper and becomes thinner towards the point, you know, it's technically you know the stone is a little lower as it gets further to the point, so it's just slightly different. Is that enough to really bother? I don't think so. Now for sword it would technically be safer to go for say a 30 degree angle or 25, something like that. So this is, um, the more acute the angle, the higher the risk of edge damage. But uh, in this case, yeah, this is going to be mainly a tatami cutter. So I'm not worried about it. So as I said, same principle as the other one. You set the angle and then you just have at it. So this one here also has the stops. So these are there to make sure that you don't slide off with the stone. The way I've got it set up here right now, so if I'm all the way over here, that's where the stop is. So essentially, I'm not really using the stops, because here it doesn't do that. The, the reason why I'm not using them is because I like to be able to use the entire length of the stone. And if I set it so that you know it, it prevents it from going off the edge here, then over there it's going to be quite a bit further up, so it doesn't use the entire length. Now, I would recommend, especially if you're just getting used to it, definitely use the stops because they are a safety feature. You know, if you, especially uh, this one right here, because you don't want to jam your fingers against the edge, you can cut yourself pretty bad. So it's good to use them, but personally, I just pay more attention to what I'm doing and uh, then I'm getting a little more life out of the stone. But as I said, I would recommend, especially in the beginning, to use them. So because I've already demonstrated the other one, I'm not going to show you too much of this. It's, again, the same kind of idea. Uh, one thing to point out is that the system is very stable. For one, there is a good amount of weight, and also it's got these rubber feet here that have good traction on most surfaces. So uh, I can drag it around like this, but even if I use the stone freehand, it doesn't go anywhere. Now if I apply equal pressure on this stroke here, of course it'll lift it up. But uh, you know, in that case you can either 
push it down and do it like this. Or you can just apply pressure on the inward stroke only. So either way, you figure out your preferences. And um, this takes quite a while, especially when the blade is as dull as this one was. I've already spent several hours on it and it's probably at least another hour or two, but eventually it should be pretty good. The edge that I've got further down here is nice and sharp already, so I'm just working on this section now. And the tape here prevents the blade from getting scratched up. I found the electrical tape works really nicely because you know, it's a little stretchy and you can actually align it and curve it and make it follow the edge in case of a curved blade like this. As I said, there's not too much of a point in showing you the entire process of sharpening because I've already done it. If you haven't seen that video, the link will be down below. And uh, the other thing I wanted to point out about this system here that I like is that there's two attachment points for the rod here. So for knives, you can put it in the rear position here, but for thicker blades, it needs to come further up here because you know, the, essentially the rod is already lifted higher than it would usually be so if it's all, all the way over there then you get a shallower angle whereas up here you can go pretty high and you can get like a 30 degree angle or even higher than 30 if you want on thicker blades so that's a very smart design overall it is a very intelligent design I quite like the feature is it makes this a lot easier. You know, if you, you're dealing with the, the simpler version, Hapstone also has a cheaper version of this sharpening system here without the clamp, where you just rest it on there. It's, it's like the, the other system that I showed. So that works perfectly well for knives in particular. But if you have larger blades, machetes, swords, and things of that nature, then this is really, really helpful. I definitely appreciate how much more convenient it makes the process. I mean, it's still time-consuming, obviously, but I find it more convenient than sharpening by hand, and especially it's a lot more precise. Like I mentioned before, you know, if you are very good at hand sharpening, you can be pretty consistent, but nowhere near as consistent as this. Of course, you also have to get used to this. You won't produce perfect edges the first time you try it, but the first time you try it, you will at least be able to get a functional edge, whereas if you try hand sharpening, that's gonna take quite a bit and probably several ruined blades before you get the hang of it. So this you can, you know, get started with and you're not gonna mess it up catas catastrophically. So, uh, yeah, you can produce really good edges with a system like this. The downside is this is quite expensive. So, in order to make it worthwhile, you would have to do a lot of sharpening. If you do, if you've got plenty of blades to, to sharpen and you know, improve and maintain, then this is great. If not, and particularly also if you mainly sharpen shorter blades, then the standard version is just fine. Either way, all I can say is that I'm very satisfied with this sharpener. I'm happy that they sent it to me. It's you know, a practical design, it's effective, it makes it simple, and you really can't beat the precision for a device that's easy to use at home. If I run into any issues at some point, I'll update you on this, but uh, so far it's been working flawlessly. Anyway, I hope you found the review helpful, and thanks for watching.